Aerobic respiration occurs within cells. It starts with glycolysis in the cytosol of the cell. It then goes through the link reaction moving into the matrix of the mitochondria. It then goes through the citric acid cycle within the mitochondria matrix. Then it goes through the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis in the inner mitochondrial membrane producing energy in the form of ATP. In this video we're going to look at the fourth process involved in aerobic respiration, the electron transport chain. At the end of the combined steps of glycolysis, the link reaction, and the citric acid cycle, we were left with 10 NADH and 2 FADH2s. During the electron transport chain, these NADHs and FADH2s are used to create a hydrogen concentration gradient between the mitochondria matrix and the intermembrane space. The electron transport chain occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Within the membrane, there are four protein complexes involved, complexes 1, 2, 3, and 4. There are also several mobile electron carriers within the membrane, ubiquinone, ubiquinol, and cytochrome C. The electron transport chain starts with complex 1. Complex 1, also known as NADH coenzyme Q reductase, consists of a flavin mononucleotide and a chain of 9 iron sulfur redox centers. The chain starts with the NADH produced in glycolysis, pyruvate dehydrogenase, and the citric acid cycle, each being oxidized at complex 1 to produce NAD plus, plus hydrogen by the reduction of the flavin mononucleotide FMN into FMNH2. In this process, two electrons are transferred from NADH to the reduced flavin mononucleotide FMNH2. These two electrons are then transferred to the chain of iron sulfur redox centers through the oxidation of FMNH2 back into FMN. These two electrons then move through complex 1 via the chain of iron sulfur redox centers from a higher energy state to a lower one. Complex 1 is also a proton pump. Energy is released by the electrons as they move to lower energy states along the chain of iron sulfur redox centers. This energy is used to pump four hydrogen protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane from the matrix into the intermembrane space. This establishes the hydrogen concentration gradient between the intermembrane space and the matrix of the mitochondria. There is a pool of carrier proteins, ubiquinone, and the reduced form, ubiquinol. At the end of the chain of iron sulfur centers, the two electrons are transferred to the mobile electron carrier, ubiquinone, one at a time. The first electron is transferred along with the hydrogen, creating the semiquinone intermediate form. The second electron is transferred along with another hydrogen, creating the reduced form ubiquinol. The next part of the electron transport chain occurs at complex 2 and occurs parallel to the processes in complex 1. Complex 2, also known as succinate coenzyme Q reductase, or just as succinate dehydrogenase, consists of a flavoprotein, a chain of three iron sulfur redox centers, and a heme V containing subunit. When succinate is oxidized into fumarate in the citric acid cycle, the oxidization produces two hydrogens, but it also produces two electrons. These two electrons are accepted by FAD, which is bound to the flavoprotein of complex 2, reducing it to form FADH2. The FADH2 transfers these two electrons to the iron sulfur redox centers, in turn converting FADH2 back into FAD. The two electrons move along the iron sulfur redox centers until they reach the heme B containing subunit. The heme B containing subunit is the binding site for ubiquinone. It is here that the electrons are transferred to the mobile electron carrier ubiquinone, reducing it to ubiquinol. 
Complex 2 is not a proton pump. The electrons from FADH2 bypass complex 1 and do not add to the net flow of hydrogen protons leaving the matrix, meaning FADH2 yields less ATP molecules than NADH. From here, the electrons from complex 1 and complex 2 are moved with the mobile electron carrier ubiquinol to complex 3. Complex 3, also known as coenzyme Q cytochrome C reductase, consists of iron protoporphyrin containing cytochrome B, a heme B containing cytochrome C, and one 2-iron two 2-sulfur two cluster center called the RISC protein. Within complex 3, a process known as the ubiquinone, or Q cycle, occurs. This cycle starts with one ubiquinol binding with the quinone binding site on cytochrome B called QP. This ubiquinol is oxidized in two steps. The first electron is transferred to the RISC protein, which also releases two hydrogens into the intermembrane space and converts ubiquinol into the semiquinone anion form. The second electron is transferred to the cytochrome B alheme. This converts the semiquinone into ubiquinone, which leaves the complex to return to the pool of ubiquinone and ubiquinol in the inner mitochondrial membrane. The electron that was transferred to the cytochrome B alheme is then transferred to the cytochrome BH heme. From the cytochrome BH heme, the electron is transferred to the second quinone binding site called QN. At the QN site, the electron converts a ubiquinone into the semiquinone. This semiquinone, in this form, is strongly bound to the QN site until another electron is available to release it in the ubiquinol form. This commences the first half of the Q cycle. The second half requires a second molecule of ubiquinol to be oxidized at the QP quinone binding site. One electron again goes to the RISC protein, again releasing another two hydrogen into the intermembrane space. The second goes to the cytochrome B alheme, then onto the cytochrome B H heme. The electron this time binds to the bound semiquinone at the QN quinone binding site, in addition to two hydrogens from the matrix, to form ubiquinol that is released back into the inner mitochondrial membrane into the coenzyme Q pool. Complex 3 is a proton pump. It is through this ubiquinone cycle that four hydrogens are pumped into the intermembrane space. That concludes the Q cycle portion of what goes on in complex 3. Now we will need to look at what happens to the electrons passed onto the iron sulfur cluster center of the RISC protein. From the RISC protein, the electrons are transferred to cytochrome C1. From cytochrome C1, the electrons are transferred to the mobile electron carrier cytochrome C. This mobile electron carrier, cytochrome C, carries the electrons to complex 4. Complex 4, also known as cytochrome C oxidase, consists of a double copper center, a heme site, and a copper plus heme A3 site. Cytochrome C transfers a single electron to the CUA center in complex 4. Four cytochrome C sequentially pass on four electrons into complex four. Each electron is then passed on to the heme A site. From here, the electron is transferred to the copper CUB and heme A3 site. At this site, the four electrons split an oxygen molecule into two oxygen atoms, which can be denoted as half oxygen. This oxygen molecule is the final acceptor of electrons in the electron transport chain. This oxygen is essential in the electron transport chain as it takes the electrons that would otherwise block the chain up, so it can continue running over and over again. Each half oxygen accepts two hydrogen protons from the matrix, each forming a water molecule. Complex 4 is a proton pump. As the electrons move to lower energy states as they move through complex 4, two hydrogens are pumped through. 
This ends the electron transport chain, leaving a high concentration of hydrogen protons in the intermembrane space and a low concentration in the matrix. This concentration gradient is vital for the production of ATP in the next step called chemiosmosis. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button.